Greetings everyone, this is Mickey with The Pondering Nerds bringing you a special tutorial slash review of PageCloud. It's this really cool brand new WYSIWYG website editor that's similar to Wix or WordPress where you can create a website and there's a CMS laid out for you, but it's a bit different because you get to pull different elements from outside of the site in into your website. So it, it's this amazing platform that Lance was really impressed by from a TechCrunch demo of it. And he showed it to me and I just, I was totally blown away. Like I felt my heart beating faster. It was amazing what I saw. So we decided to create an account and we're gonna share with you today what we've learned about the platform. So once you log into your account, you will be brought to the dashboard, which will show you your website and the website name. We named ours test two because we're testing it out. Um, and you also get your own personal page that's separate from your website. So if you want to have your own little space on the web, that's, um, it's just separate from your website. You can play around here. And, um, there's a uh, similar options for your personal page. You get to share it with the world. Um, you get to scrap it totally to just start start new. Um, same thing with your website. Uh, but with your website, you get to park a personal domain to that website. Or you can use the default website, which is your name, the, the website's name, .pagecloud.com. Go to your accounts drop-down menu. Um, to see all of the administrative options, you will see five links, your dashboard profile, bookmarklets, password and billing, password and billing. That's self-explanatory. The dashboard, we're in the dashboard right now, your profile lists the information that you signed up to the account with. So you, you'll see your username, your email and your, the name of the name of your account. Pretty much. Um, we're covering our personal information because we don't want anyone to have it pretty much. <laughs> and then when it comes to this bookmarklets option, uh, there is displayed the five mm, pretty common, I wouldn't say most common features that a person is going to access. But um, yeah, these are the buttons that you're going to use a lot. And I suggest that you drag them into your bookmarks because like I said, they're pretty common. Um, in the TechCrunch demo, they, these, uh, buttons were actually in a drop down menu and I'm not sure why they broke it up into these separate buttons, but yeah, page cloud is, it's changing. It's changing before our eyes. I, I've seen actual, um, changes myself since we've had the account since they went live. So yeah, um, I'm going to keep abreast of all the changes that is happening with PageCloud and I'm reading up on their blog and yeah, I, I suggest that you do the same, you know, just to make sure that you follow what's going on with PageCloud. So let's get started. As you can see, there's a blank page. Um, what I plan on doing is I'm going to find a really simple web layout that I'm going to recreate in page cloud. So for now, I'm just gonna fool around with some objects here. You can use their default text element, right? You can change the text here. Right. Um, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, and this page cloud window here, it shows a lot of the features that you're going to use the most, right? When I mentioned the SEO option that they had before, um, 
the SEO options that they used to have, it's actually removed. Um, you were able to edit the SEO, um, the SEO buzzwords for your website, but they took it out and I'm not really sure why now there's this page, um, this page button that brings you to the title description and keywords, which I, it, it's similar to SEO, but not really. Um, I'm not sure if this affects the metadata for the site or what, um, but yeah, they took it out. There are a lot of cool tutorial videos that are here available for folks, um, which is cool. I found the iframes one really useful, the Google Analytics one really useful. Um, the other ones are self-explanatory for the most part. Um, I like that you get to lock objects in place. So that way, if you are, um, working on your layout and you want to make sure that something just stays put and it doesn't conflict with other things that you're like fooling around with, like it just, it stays around. Also, you can lock things together. So in other words, group them together, right? So to select you. Um, press down, you, you hold down sh the shift key and then you select each of the elements that you want to, um, to select pretty much. And then you click group. So what that does is it brings all the elements that you've selected together and it keeps them in place together in relation to each other. And I think this is really useful for when you're first, uh, working on your layout. Um, but once the initial layout is in place, then you want to break them apart as soon as possible, because then you're going to go in and then you're going to do your individual, your individual, um, changes. So that's good. One of the tutorial videos that I would have loved to have seen is a tutorial video on the bookmarklets, because like I said, in the TechCrunch demo, their menu was different. So I was looking for a drop down menu that you bring into the bookmarks. So, or, or like I, I was expecting like an extension or something, but it wasn't the case at all. It was just, um, the bookmarks, the bookmarklets that they had in the administrative, um, in the administrative menu. And I didn't know that until, uh, uh until Lance showed me. So that would have been a useful tutorial video. And I, I would also like to see more tutorial videos for developers, like how do we add CSS? How do we add JavaScript? Um, is it just a matter of importing pages from other websites that have the JavaScript and the CSS that we want? That doesn't make any sense. I'm thinking that maybe CSS and JavaScript and other bits of code is added the way Google Analytics is added. So what you have to do when you want to link a Google Analytics account is to, you have to select the ID, the analytics ID. And then, so what you do is you copy that text and you paste it. You just go into the page and you paste it. So let me show you. Okay. So as you can see, um, you have a tracking ID that's linked to your Google Analytics account. And so what you would do is you would copy that information, go back to your page cloud page and paste it in place. So once I do that, then you will see a notification saying Google Analytics added. And for each page cloud page that you want to, that you want Google Analytics to track, you have to do that same action for every single page. It's not, that you plug it into one page and then it's applied across the board. You have to go into each page and add that code. So I'm assuming maybe later on down the line, if it doesn't already support this, this is how you would add your CSS code or your JavaScript code. But honestly, I'm not sure. I didn't see anything like that. Um, uh, mentioned anywhere when it comes to using images on page cloud, you can drag them in like so. And unfortunately, if the image is really big, then you run the risk of having it freeze on you. Like it's happened for me a couple of times. Um, 
I try to make the image smaller, but for some images, you don't want them to be smaller. You want them to be bigger because when they're blown up, they get pixelated. So for an image like this, for example, I want it to be big. I want it to, to span the whole width. Well, more or less like the whole width of the page. Um, so to do that, you would choose this option, uh, full bleed and the effects setting. And in that way, it'll show up this, this way. Um, and then you would turn this off if you don't want that middle column. So this, I'm gonna move down so I can get rid of these babies and then push it up a little bit. And then you can preview it by saving your page. Oh, I need to name mine. So let's name it YouTube Tut. YouTube Tutorial, okay? All right, okay. But yeah, this is how the page will show up for you when you have an image that spans the whole width, okay? Full bleed. Now, in order to delete an image, what you can do is you can delete it from the page it's on by just clicking delete. Or if you want to delete it from the website for good, you would hold down the control and then backspace and then you'll get this pop-up that says you know you want to you want to remove it from the server as well so i'm going to look for something like simple web page layout and then recreate it in in page cloud all right this looks simple enough so i will use this one page cloud lets you drag images into the page itself, which is great. So I'm going to have this in the, on the side here, and then I'm just going to recreate it. Like I said before, one of the cool things that I would love to see is for users to have the ability to set um, a font of their choice. So whenever they create new text boxes, that set font will be applied for all of those elements. As you can see, there are shortcuts here on the right um, that are really useful. You just go to the shortcuts menu here. I really like these guides. They're really useful. They make everything line up just right. You use the arrange uh, menu to bring objects to the front or to the back. Uh, if you want to align a bunch of things, together, um, also grouping, ungrouping, locking and unlocking. And remember what I said before, um, when you're doing the initial layout of a website, like what I'm doing right now, it's really useful to group things together so you can move them um, all together at once. Or if you wanna like bring them to the back or to the front all at once. And then when you're done, you can ungroup them.
and I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, pretty much. I, I just wanted to do a quick duplicate of this layout and yeah, I was able to achieve that. I'm going to save it and preview and there we go. One thing that I would like to see in page cloud is the ability to change the height of a page. Unfortunately, when uh, you import a page, for example, I'm going to import the Pottery Nerds page to test to. You see that everything is pulled in, right? There's me. Uh, but unfortunately, when you edit something and you wanna like close that gap, what you have to do is you have to select everything, right? And then you move it all up. But once you move it up, there's no real way to close the gap on the bottom, right? So let's put all this new stuff here, right? But then you have all this space on the bottom that's still left over and I can't push at this gap up. So once I save the page, um, PN dupe, and I check it out, it's looking beautiful, right? made a little change there, but I can't push this big space up. So that's kind of annoying and hopefully page cloud will fix that. So yeah, that is my little tutorial slash review of page cloud. And I hope that that was helpful to you guys. Feel free to shoot us any questions or comments and I will be more than happy to make another video if it's helpful. Um, I, I also want to encourage folks to share their pages because it's always cool to share what you've done. Page Cloud lets you share your site or your personal page to Twitter or Facebook. And you can also copy the link and share it to other places if you'd like. Thanks so much.